Hello there. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 and welcome. Bless the name of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and in it. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We're so glad that you are here today, and we're so glad that you are with us today. Oh, my goodness. These are the holy days. This is the holy weekend, 2024, and we are so excited that you are here. I'm Pastor Catherine Smith, the founder and executive director of Powerful Life Ministries, Kids Lives Matter, Mega Care Impact, and Glory Meals and Cakes. Bless God. I'll uh, let my co-host introduce herself. Hello to everybody. I'm Pastor Madeline Trailer. I'm the co-director and co-founder of Powerful Life Ministries, Kids Lives Matter, Mega Care Impact, Glory Meals and Cakes. And we are excited to be able to join you on one of the most, not one of the most holiest week as we step into uh, celebrating Monday, Thursday and getting ready to step into Good Friday. Hallelujah. Bless God right now wherever you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So Pastor Trailer, go ahead and tell them how they can um, connect with us on social media and what all they need to do. Yes, we want you to come in, whether you're coming in on Facebook. What do we need you to do? We need you to hit that thumbs up, hit the like, and then we need you to comment and continue to comment. Guess what that does? That gets our engagement up. That lets others hear and receive a word from the Lord through Powerful Life Ministries. And then you're coming in on YouTube. We need you to hit that bell. Hit, hit that bell so that you can get all of the live notifications. And again, you're coming in on YouTube or Facebook. We need you to comment and keep commenting throughout the entirety of our broadcast. Don't just comment one time. Let's keep the comments going. What does that do? That encourages us. That lets us know that you're here, right? But it also allows us to continue to get our engagement up. So let's all do our part. So whether you're on your tablet, your phone, you're watching us on the big screen. And if you're able to, you can come in on both platforms. Let's all do our part to continue to spread the gospel. We're doing what the word says. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And if you have a prayer request or a praise report, you can also text that to us at 832-229-8242. International, put a plus one in front of it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So just to give a uh, backup, what Pastor Trailer has said, bless the name of the Lord. This is, this is, this is, this is. The Holy Weekend, bless the name of the Lord. And this is the day the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, bless the name of the Lord. We thank the Lord, hallelujah, for this Holy Weekend, for this Maldi Thursday or Holy Thursday, and then for Good Friday as well. Bless the name of the Lord. We serve an awesome God who has done so much for us. Bless the name of the Lord. So we're so glad for our uh, United States partners who are on watching. Bless the name of the Lord. And we're excited also for our international partners who are on watching as well. So as you are coming on, as you are coming on now, as you are coming on, as you're coming on to YouTube and Facebook Live, hallelujah, you're up, you're alert, hallelujah, you revere the Lord, you're ready to go before the Lord, mm -hmm. you're hitting the like, you're hitting uh, the share, you're hitting the follow, you're choosing all notifications, bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, my mom has just come on. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Minister William Stickney has just come on. Bless the name of the Lord. Hello to you. Hallelujah. LaFonda, hello to you. Bless the name of the Lord. As you all are coming on, hello, 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 hello. Sonia Wallace, hello. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lady Dana, 
Bless the name of the Lord. Mr. Percy, bless the name of the Lord. As you all are coming in, comment and keep commenting and hit the like, 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 like. Keep hitting the like, like, like. Give us hearts and likes. Bless the name of the Lord. This keeps our algorithm going. And actually what happens is people are actually able to see our broadcast who may not know who we are. Bless God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. As they go in on YouTube or on Facebook and as they search regarding uh, uh, keywords, maybe Good Friday or Maundy Thursday or Holy Week, so forth and so on, they are able to watch our broadcast. And then by you sharing it out, by you sharing it out, hallelujah, bless the name of the Lord, by you sharing out the broadcast, share it out on Facebook and then share it out on YouTube as well. YouTube is going to give you a link and you just send that link to family and friends. This is so important. Your whole family should be watching. Everyone in your house should be watching. Bless the name of the Lord. If you have a spouse, your spouse should be watching. You all should be getting the same word, worshiping together. If you've got kids, teenagers, college students, young adults, you should be sending them a text message. You should be telling them, sharing with them to come on and go before the Lord. Hallelujah. These are the holy days. These are the most holy days. Bless the name of the Lord. All right. So while you're watching, if you are new or haven't been with us in a while, please fill out our form. It'll come across the ticker at the bottom, or you can text us at 832-229-8242. 832-229-8242. You can also text us your prayer request. We pray over every prayer request. And when we pray, results happen. Or your praise report. God has done marvelous things in your life, whether it's on a small scale, medium scale, large scale, extra large scale. He has done great things in your life. And it is imperative. It's imperative that you give the Lord praise hallelujah you should always have a praise report right pastor trailer that's right always we always it's always your praise report tonight right pastor trailer that's right that's right hallelujah is that gonna be right after you minister pastor trailer or oh okay it's gonna be right after you minister okay praise god no it'll hallelujah. be after let me let me correct okay. that it will be after you yeah uh after we uh get ready before we get ready for the offering i'm sorry Oh, okay. Okay. Bless the name of the Lord. All right. So you're here with Powerful Life Ministries. Bless God. We provide help, healing, hope to the masses and good health and good health. Bless God. Hallelujah. Pastor Taylor, why don't you start us off by telling us, uh, telling everybody what we do and how we do it on four continents by the grace of God. Yes, we do it by the grace of God. So take a look at your screen. Of course, you want to stay plugged in with all things Powerful Life and Kids Lives Matter. You can follow us both individually and you can follow us as a ministry. Praise God. So we want you to stay abreast so that you can stay plugged in. How we're serving God, how we're meeting the needs of those that are in need, how we are spreading the gospel. Take a look at your screen. You can see an awesome, awesome awesome worship service that pastor smith had the privilege of ministering at that's glory land right here in houston texas where our headquarters are where the power of the lord was demonstrated in such such an awesome awesome way and we are so grateful for the opportunity to minister with our brothers and sisters at glory land but you can see how we're out in the community you can see how we're providing meals you can see how we're delivering and showing and demonstrating the love and compassion of christ not only here in the u.s but on four continents getting ready to be five so you can see all the ways that powerful life and kids lives matter is a blessing you can see your seed in action you can see your seed in motion as we give and show guess what that does that draws others to the lord so as you're looking at your screen you can see all the ways that we are going out and we are making a difference and we are impactful why because we're intentional you can see how we're helping to minister and encourage to our brothers and sisters in the motherland. And you can see our awesome partnership with the University of Houston STEM Center. See our students dressed up serving as judges. 
just last month, they had the awesome privilege of serving as judges for the Science and Engineering Fair of Houston. So these are wonderful, wonderful opportunities that our students are being able to partake of. And we are so grateful. We are so thankful for all the doors that God is opening for us. And then, of course, through our mega care, where we have specific initiatives that the Lord lays upon our hearts to be a blessing to. So one of the initiatives that we have right now is we're helping to rebuild the house of worship, shepherd praise in Ghana. We're providing, not only have we been able to provide a door, we've been able to provide chairs. Now what we're doing is we are build, we are helping to rebuild not only the uh, church edifice, but we're helping to rebuild the floor so that the parishioners do not have to go to the house of God and have to sit on the floor on the dirt floor. We're actually going in and helping to provide that. So we are so thankful. And what does God say? God reminds us that when we give to those that are in need, we will never lack. When they've been able to provide for Vait Vikoff Academy, a school in Ghana as well. See how we're providing for the next generation that is coming up. And I don't can't I can't think of a more opportune time for us to be reminded because this is what Jesus did. He was out. He was amongst the people. We are just imitating what Jesus did. So when you give to help, to help rebuild, to help repair, to help restore, we're doing what Jesus did when he was here on the earth. And we are so thankful. We're so thankful to all of our partners who give and who give on a continual basis so that we can continue to be a continual blessing to the cause that God has assigned us to praise his name today. And then of course we have our glory meals and cakes. You all know that we provide for those that are in need and those that are not in need. We're going to be doing an amazing distribution this Saturday. We thank the Lord. We'll not be gathering for our resurrection service physically in a building. We need y'all to keep praying for the Houston housing authority. Praise God. But we will be delivering meals to our residents who live in the communities and other areas where our glory families live and reside. So your giving helps us. It helps us to not only be able to provide a meal. The meal is just the gateway. The meal just gets us in the door, right? It allows us to be able to encourage. It allows us to show love. So some of our glory recipients, this will be the only resurrection dinner celebration that they have right and so we want to be able to provide for them meals that will last for several days because we're providing generous portions your giving helps us to con do that on a continual monthly basis so for all of our glory givers you all are truly glory heroes so we want you to continue to show love and continue to support what God has called us to. And then, of course, you can reach out to us for your own occasions, for your own birthdays, anniversaries, work gatherings, even for meal prep. Why are you in the kitchen sweating it out? Why don't you let Glory Meals handle it for you? And just like our tagline says, we're feeding the world with grace. Praise the name of the Lord. So make sure that you reach out to us. We've got our updated menu. So you want to check out some of our amazing items. You do not want to miss. We've launched some special, special spring items. So take a look at our menu and check it out. Praise God. When we send you that text message, don't just scroll it down. Look at what we're featuring. And we thank the Lord for all of our new and exciting, exciting entrees our wonderful, delicious cakes. And you all know about our famous berry-infused tea. You do not want to miss. So let's get those orders in and let's support the kingdom. Now, when you order from Glory Meals and Cakes for your own needs, guess what? We're able to provide even more for our assigned Glory in families. Praise God. So it, let's just keep the cycle going. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And so we're so thankful as we get ready to step in and be reminded of the significance of this holy week. Again, if you have a prayer request or praise report, make sure that you text us. And we know you do. We know you've got something to celebrate what God has done. Praise God. 
So make sure you text us at 832-229-8242. If you're international, make sure that you put a plus one in front of it. Hallelujah. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it moving on this very, very special, special E. As we get ready to step into Good Friday, let's consecrate ourselves. Let's focus on him. And it was the Lord that spoke to us to host this at 11.30 p.m. Houston Central Standard Time, right before we step into Good Friday. Why? This is a very strategic hour, right? Many of you know we've ministered about what happens at midnight when Paul and Silas were in prison. And they began praying and praising and lifting up the name of the Lord. What happened in the prison? The chains broke, right? You can expect that was a miracle in and of itself. So this is a strategic time for us to come together. It's a strategic time for us to pray. And it's a very strategic time for us to remember what Jesus did on the cross. So let's gather. Let's focus. Let's stay up for our brothers and sisters abroad. For many of them, it's very early in the morning, right? For those of us here in the U.S., we know it's the evening. But just like we stay up to watch movies, stay up to watch our games, right? We can stay up in honor and worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. God, we bless you. God, we praise you. God, we thank you. God, we honor your name. God, you are great. You are greatly to be praised. There's simply nobody like the God that we serve. So we come before you very humbly. We come before you consecrating ourselves. We come before you lifting up our hands in worship to you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So as we come boldly before your throne of grace, we step in, we enter in your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter in, Father, knowing that as you are the God that goes before us, who can be against us? So we spend this time gathered. We spend this time honoring. We spend this time worshiping. We spend this time magnifying your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. So we open up our spiritual ears to hear from you. We open up our spiritual ears to receive from you right now in the name of Jesus. And on this Monday, Thursday, stepping into Good Friday, we remember the sacrifice. We remember the blood. We remember what you did for us, Lord. And we're so grateful. So, Lord, right now, as we gather, as we hear, and as we receive, Father, we show our adoration. We show our thanksgiving and we show our gratitude to you, God. We submit our very lives to you in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Let's honor him. Let's remember him. Let's reflect on his goodness, his grace and his mercy that he shows to us in such amazing ways. So as we are Right now, it's 1150. We still have 10 minutes left here in Houston Central Standard Time that we can remember Monday, Thursday. You probably say, well, what's Monday, Thursday? Why is that important? Monday, Thursday. And if you think about that word, the Latin meaning of that means command. So it was on the Thursday of Christ's final week before being crucified and resurrected, because we remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection, right? That he said this commandment to the disciples. Jesus and his disciples had just shared what was known as the Last Supper. And when we take of communion, we're gonna remember that, right? And he was washing their feet when he stated, and you think about that. Here's Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. Here is the Prince of Peace in a very humble, very lowly position, demonstrating and showing what it means 
to serve because that's what he was doing. So he said in John 13 and 34, John 13 and 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you and also are to love one another. So here's Jesus giving a commandment, which is what Monday Thursday is all about. It's a command, right? Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment after washing their feet. And he commanded them to love one another. Love, just as he's shown love, we are to show that same type of love to one another. Then he says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, if you have that love, people will know that you are my disciples. They'll do that. And if you think about what Jesus did, he raised the definition of love. He raised that to a new standard. He raised that, like I tell my students, he raised that to the next level. Jesus leveled up and he showed us what a level up, what a next level kind of love, what it looks like. Because he sacrificious, sacri in his sacrifice, praise God, the enemy trying to trip up my words, in his sacrifice, he met his followers' deepest need. That is of a new spiritual life. He met that need with the forgiveness of sins. He met that need of healing. He met the need of peace. He met the need of joy. He met the need of restoration. Even Jesus loved his enemies. And he calls us to show love to those who don't appear to deserve it. That's how you really know you can love somebody when they don't even appear like they should be loved or they don't treat you the way you expect them to be treated. But Jesus demonstrated all of that on the cross. He did all of that. So he wants us to remember. He wants us to reflect on what he did. Because just as Jesus loves sinners to the end, right? Or to the max, as it is in John 13 and 31. When he had nothing to gain from them, we've got to do the same, right? God loved us while we were yet sinners. He died for us, right? Romans 5 and 8. So on this Monday, Thursday, where we remember, well, we remember the Lord's Supper. Well, we remember that gathering. Well, we remember what he did when he broke bread with the disciples. The breaking of the bread symbolizing his body that was going to be broken and bruised and hung and bled, crucified. We remember that. We remember the cup because the cup represents the blood that was shed that dripped down on the cross. One of the most painful ways that you can die, an excruciating pain, an indescribable pain, an unimaginable pain, the weight of the world was upon him. But he did it all. He made it clear that his sacrifice of his life was for our redemption, right? And everything that Jesus did during this Holy Week, it symbolizes what he did for us. So as he invited his disciples to the Lord's Supper to partake of this last supper, he invites us to do the same. He invites us to remember. He invites us to submit submit our very lives. He invites us to surrender it all to him. He is, he has invited us to the table to remember. So that's what we're doing 
as we get ready to step into Good Friday, we're remembering. And he wants us to love each other, just like he showed his love to his followers. And he showed his love to his disciples. Can you imagine breaking bread before you get ready to have your last breath? Food would be the last thing on your mind, right? But here's Jesus showing his love, washing the feet of the disciples. Could you be doing all of that knowing what's getting ready to happen in a few hours? So this Monday, Thursday, we've been commanded, commanded to be reminded of the love because Jesus' charge was to do this in remembrance of me. Do this. The Last Supper became the inaugural Lord's Supper, right? So this idea of communion is more than just, well, I'm going to take this bread and I'm going to take this cup and I'm going to go and eat this. You know, when I was little, uh, when I would go to church and we would have the Lord's Supper, we would come back on Sundays for the Lord's Supper. We wouldn't have it during the service and we would come back, right? And we would come back and partake of the Lord's Supper. And I can remember them passing around. The ladies would have the white scarves on their heads. And I can remember that cup being, uh, I mean, the uh, crackers being passed around. And then we would all get the juice. And I would, you know, as a child, you don't understand the significance of all of it, right? A lot of times I would be hungry and I said, oh, this will hold me till I get ready to go home and eat, right? But I do remember very, very vividly, and this wasn't even on my script, but I do remember my grandmother, my grandfather, my parents, all singing that song, the blood. I know it was the blood for me. And they would say that over and over. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. So I that is embedded in my spirit. Because I know now as I've gotten older, I know it was the blood. The blood that cleanses. The blood that heals. The blood that delivers, but also the blood that sets us free, my God. So as we are stepping in from Monday, Thursday and stepping into Good Friday, we are thanking the Lord for his sacrifice. We're thanking the Lord for the blood. We're thanking the Lord for what he did for us. Luke 22, 19 through 20 says, then he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to them. And I'm reiterating this again. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. I want you to pause just for a moment. And I want you to think right now at the stroke of midnight, I want you to think about what does the blood, what does it symbolize for you? What does Jesus' sacrifice mean to you? What does his ultimate demonstration of love have meaning? What meaning does it have for you? Because when he did that, he was fulfilling a commitment to us to sacrifice his life so that we can walk in freedom. We can walk in victory. And we can walk in love. Just like he showed that to his followers. Just like he showed it to his disciples. And just like he showed it on the cross. What are you going to do? 
So this communion may not be like one that you've done before where you just go through the motions of doing it. I want you to think. I want you to pause. I want you to reflect on what this means to you. And we're going to take a moment right now and do that. Before we step any further in our time of worship, I want you to think about what the blood means for you. And I also want you to go grab those communion elements if you don't have it, because we're getting ready to partake of communion. Praise the name of the Lord. So grab those communion elements while you're reflecting and remembering what the sacrifice of Jesus, what the last supper, what the Lord's supper means for you. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We're pausing right now to think about that. The screen is going to go off for just a second while we pause, reflect, and remember what that means to you. praise the name of the lord so did you pause for a moment to think about what this ultimate demonstration of love means to you what does it mean to your family what does it mean to you moving forward what does it mean for us as a ministry? Praise the name of the Lord. So as we get ready to pause that you have your communion elements, you got a piece of bread, you got a cracker. Even if you don't have any of that, you can still partake of the Lord's Supper, right? Such an awesome, awesome time to remember what Jesus did on the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. And what does it mean for you? What does it mean for you moving forward this year? What does it mean for your family? So the Holy Communion, known as the Lord's Supper, again, it represents the greatest expression of love, right? Jesus's body, which was broken and bruised before and during, because you got to think about the journey to the cross. He was being beaten all the way there, but he did it for you. And the cup which represents the blood. Because while Jesus was on earth, he was vibrant. His body was full of life and it was full of health. He was never sick. But before Jesus went to the cross, he was badly scoured by the Roman soldiers and his body was torn as it hung on the cross. Can you imagine that? I want you to really get a visual of that. But at the cross, at the cross, <laughs> My saints that on here where I first saw the light, right? At the cross, he took on sicknesses. He took on diseases. He put all, he took on all of that. It was all on his perfect body, right? Why? So that we can walk in divine health. He did that. That's why the Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. In Luke 22 and 20, Jesus tells us that the cup is the new covenant, the new promise, right? In my blood. And the apostle Paul tells us that the blood of Jesus provided forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? That Jesus 
had a plan for us. And his plan included his death, burial, and resurrection. He had a plan for you to be free. He's got a plan for you to walk out your purpose here on the earth. Why? Because he walked out his purpose. He fulfilled his purpose on the cross so that you can fulfill your purpose. I'm tying it all in. We're not just taking communion for the sake of it. We're relating it. We're connecting it to us in our lives right now. So as Jesus was getting ready to be betrayed, he still took time out because he put the needs of others before himself. He wanted to make sure that this last, the last few moments with his disciples would be significant, it would be meaningful, and it would be a time to remember, and it would be a model for us to do moving forward. So he did that for us because he was concerned about us, right? So the Lord's Supper is more than just the cracker and the juice. It's a time again for us to do this in remembrance of him, right? Because the communion is not a ritual to be observed, but it's a blessing to be received. It's a blessing for us to receive. It's a blessing for us to reflect on what he did. And I keep reiterating that because the Holy Spirit has me keep going back to that. So let's take the bread. Let's take the bread. Let's take the bread and remember the body of Jesus, right? And let's reflect. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, right? Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is healed, restored, and it's made anew. Father, I thank you that I can walk in forgiveness, walk in wholeness, and I can walk knowing that what you did on the cross, you did it for me. Let's partake of the bread. Then we can take the cup and we can thank the Lord for his precious blood, right? Sin-free, disease-free, poverty-free life is in the blood. His shed blood removed every sin. So through his blood, I'm forgiven. I'm made whole. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for remembering me as I rejoice in it now. Let's partake of the blood. Father, right now, we thank you. We thank you for this time of reflection and remembrance. God, we thank you that your death, burial, and resurrection reminds me daily, God, of your love and compassion that you have for me. Father, as I move forward into holy resurrection, this, this holy resurrection weekend, God, I will never forget what you did for me. Father, I thank you that I can step, walk free, that I can walk restored, and that I can walk in victory because of what you did on the cross. So, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm turning over, back over to Pastor Smith. Hello, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh my goodness, we are so glad that you are here. You are not here by happenstance. You are here by divine appointment. Bless the Lord. Pastor Taylor did an awesome job of, a job of ministering on Holy Thursday, on Maundy Thursday. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And now we're into Good Friday. We are into Good Friday. We're so glad you're here. Let me see your comments. Let me see your amens, your hallelujah. Oh my goodness, what are you expecting the Lord to do? Hallelujah. What revelation are you expecting to receive? 
this resurrection weekend. This is the holy weekend. This is the holy week. Bless the name of the Lord. And we're glad that you are here. Not only should you be listening, but your spouse, if you're married, should be listening. Not only that, but your family should be listening. You should be hearing the same word. Your children of all ages, your kids, your teenagers, your college students, your young adults, your full grown adults, your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids, your great great grandkids should be hearing the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Remember to send us in your prayer requests and your praise report. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and we'll be glad in it. Two services in one. Oh my goodness. Now listen, Pastor Taylor already told you we were so sad that we were not able to have our physical face-to-face -face resurrection service that we have uh, planned, but the uh, Houston Housing Authority, their legal department, had to review a legal document, or is still reviewing a legal document that all of their community partners, and we're one of them, uh, had to turn in, and, and uh, we were not, we, we had not heard back regarding using the building, but that's okay. Our buildings are coming. Our buildings are coming and they are coming soon in Jesus name. So the Lord just simply had us to pivot. Bless the name of the Lord. This weekend, when we actually gather, Pastor Trailer already shared at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, there's a group of us. We are gathering Saturday, March the 30th, Saturday, March the 30th. Not only will we, will we prepare our glory meals, but those glory meals, we're uh, delivering them, but evangelism will take place evangelism. We're going to be ministering the word of God. We're going to be handing out pamphlets. We're going to be getting people saved. We're going to be praying for the needs of the people. So the word of the Lord is still going forth. And not only bless the name of the Lord, will the glory of this ministry be operating in our HQ, our headquarters here in Houston, Texas. But oh my goodness, Ghana will be having a similar thing going on in Ghana. We've got that set up and we'll tell you more about that later. Bless the name of the Lord. So we're so glad you all are plugged in. We're so glad you all are plugged in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's get to Good Friday. Let's get to Good Friday. I am telling you, Father, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Understand this, in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus made a decision that would forever change his destiny and ours. Jesus made a decision Jesus made a profound decision in the Garden of Gethsemane right before he was led off to come before Pontius Pilate. He made a decision. He made a poignant decision. He made a destiny decision that would change his destiny and ours. Jesus chose not to abandon us. Jesus chose not to abandon us in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to return to heaven right now. I'm not going to do it right now, but I am going to remain to be pierced at the cross. He says, I am going to remain to be beaten beyond recognition, to be scourged, to be whipped with a cat of nine tails. I am going to remain. Now listen, Jesus could have gotten up, walked out of the Garden of Gethsemane where the Bible says he sweat so that his sweat turned into blood. He could have gotten up and said, forget this, I'm not doing this. But Jesus chose, he chose, he chose us. He chose us. He chose us. He chose us. He said, I'm not going to return to heaven right this very second, but I am going to sit here and take on, take on, take this on, take this on. I'm going to sit here and take on sin. I'm going to sit here and take on sickness. I am going to take this on. Why? 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 Because he did that so that when we leave this earth, we would be with Jesus forever and so that Jesus, so that we could be able to worship and praise him forever. Jesus is fully God, according to John chapter one. And he came to the earth as man. Jesus came to the earth as man. The Bible says in Philippians chapter two, verse eight, 
in Philippians chapter two, verse eight, the Bible says this, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. He humbled. Every time you humble yourself, every time you come under the submission, uh, every time you submit, you are more like Jesus Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Philippians chapter two, verse eight. Jesus became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He left his privileges. He left his powers in heaven to become man. Jesus, fully God, fully man. This means that like other human beings, he had feelings, he had affections, he had sentiments. Jesus, fully God, yet fully man when he walked in the earth, here in the, on the earth. Listen to this. If Jesus had come to the earth, as only God, then we, then he would not have been able to die on the cross for our sins. Why? Because God can't die. God lives forever. So this is why the Lord had to come to earth as man. Man is mortal. We know that. So Jesus came as man. He suffered as man. The blood, the sweat, the tears, they were real. The pain, it was real. The death was real on Good Friday. The death was real on Good Friday. We see his suffering when he prayed so desperately in the Garden of Gethsemane. Luke chapter 22, verse 42 says this. Jesus says this, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Father, this is what Jesus is saying. If it is your will, take this cup. I don't want to do this. This is too much. This is, oh my goodness. But he says, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. What we see here, what we see here is not only a natural type of suffering. The flesh did not want to go through what Jesus knew he was about to go through. But there's often a spiritual suffering that we don't see. See, there was a spiritual cup. That was a spiritual cup that was offered to Jesus. And in that cup, in that cup that was offered to Jesus, lay all our sins all our iniquities in that cup, in that spiritual cup, lay all the curses, lay all the filth, lay all of the filthiness that we have done in our lives. And to drink that cup, for Jesus to drink that cup meant that he would be separated from his father, whom he loves. Up until that time, Jesus had never been separated from his father. The reason Jesus could do all kind of miracles when he walked the earth was that the Lord was with him. Jesus could do all kinds of miracles because the Lord was with him. Oh my goodness. John chapter five says this. Jesus says this. My father has been working until now and I have been working. Jesus says this in John chapter five, verse 17 through 19, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees his father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Every time he mentioned the father, every time Jesus mentioned the father, he found strength and he found comfort. So guess what? Jesus was given a choice. He was given a choice to drink the cup of our sins or he could just go home to heaven. He could escape all of the persecution altogether. Jesus was given a choice. Jesus was given a choice to drink the cup of our sins, the cup of our filthiness, the cup of us lying, the cup of all of the worst things that we could have ever done. Jesus was given a choice to drink the cup of our sins or to get up and go home to heaven. 
if he rejected the cup, his father would bring him home quickly and the whole world would go to hell. If Jesus would have rejected that cup, if Jesus would have rejected that cup, the whole world would have gone to hell because of sin. But guess what? Jesus loved us so much that he stayed. Jesus loved us so, so much that he stayed. He drank the cup of our sins to the very last drop. He went all the way for us. Jesus went all the way for you. He went all the way for you to the cross. Jesus went all the way. He went all the way. So at the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, the perfect servant, did not choose to go free, but he stayed. He stayed on earth because he loved his father. He loved his bride, the church. We're the church. We are the body of Christ. And because Jesus chose to stay, Jesus chose to drink from that cup. He who knew no sin took on sin. Jesus drank from that cup. Jesus knew no sin, but he loved us so much. He had a choice. He could have got up and left and said, forget this. Father, bring me home back to heaven. But we would have all perished and gone to hell. And the Bible says that hell was really not created for man. Hell was created for the devil and the devil's angels called demons. But Jesus chose to remain. He chose to remain to endure. He chose to remain. He was scourged. He was pierced by a crown. He was had uh, uh, thorns and nails. Oh, my goodness. Are you hearing me? Scars in his hands, side, feet, they'll forever remain as a sign of his love for us. When you get to heaven, you'll see it. You'll see it. You'll see the crown of thorns. You'll see the nails of the Roman spear. You will see it. You'll be reminded of how much he loved us. He didn't have to, but he chose us. He didn't have to, but he chose us. Do you remember the saints back in the day say he would not come down off the cross just to save himself? He what? He decided. He decided. He decided. He decided. He decided. As a man, when Jesus walked the earth, he felt the physical pain of scourging on Good Friday, the thorns, the nails. His greatest suffering was his, the separation from his father. At the cross, he cried out in Matthew chapter 27, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God turned his back on him. At the time when Jesus needed his father the most, his father had to turn his back on him. You know why? Because if God did not turn his back on Jesus, he would have had to turn his back on you and I. If God did not turn his back on Jesus, he would have had to turn his back on you and I. So Jesus took our place. He took our place. He took our place. He took our place. And this is why God's face is always shining on us. God's face is always shining upon you. Let me get you to understand that. God's face is always shining upon you. Why? Because Jesus took your place. Jesus took on your filth. Jesus took on your sin. Jesus took all the goriness 
all the things we can't even imagine that people would do. Jesus took it on. And now today, we have God's face smiling on us at all times. The countenance of God is smiling on you and your family. Are you hearing me? Numbers chapter 6 verse 25 says this. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Jesus paid the price. He was whipped with a cat of nine tails. He was whipped. He was whipped. Do you remember in the movie, The Passion of the Christ? They would hit him first with just a whip. And he kept standing up. He kept standing up. So they took that whip and put hooks on it. They took that whip and put hooks on it. So the hooks would go into the flesh and begin to pull the flesh from the bone. Where you could see the bone. Jesus was beat beyond recognition. We would not even be able to survive it. But Jesus says, I made a choice. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Jesus even said in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, Lord, can this cup be removed? The cup of sin. The cup of filthiness. Jesus took all of your filthiness on so that you could walk in power. So that you could walk in prosperity. You're not supposed to be poor. Jesus took it on. We're not supposed to be sick and riddled with sin. Jesus took it on. We're not supposed to be in lack. Jesus took it on. Jesus says, I took it on so you wouldn't have to take it on. Jesus says, draw closer to me. Let me be your true Lord and Savior. Let me regulate everything in your life. Jesus says, I've taken it on. So why are you trying to handle it? I've taken it on. Jesus paid the price so that God would always smile upon you. Jesus paid the price so that favor would always come toward you. Jesus paid the price so that you would never lack, never lack, never lack. Well, Pastor Smith, why do some Christians lack? Because a lot of times we put our hands in stuff. Instead of letting Jesus Christ lead us and guide us, getting his wisdom for everything, Lord, help me with my finances. Lord, help me on the job. Lord, help me with this. Help me with that. Show me how to do this. Show me how to get a plan. Show me what store I need to go to. Tell me if I need to spend this. Holy Ghost, tell me every single thing. Speak to me 24-7. Give me all my instructions. Help me to sit down and plan things out. Help me to yield not to temptation. My God, Jesus says, I took on everything so you wouldn't have to take it on. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? God's smiling upon you. Yeah, I know you messed up. You may have messed up five minutes ago, five days ago, five hours ago, five years ago. But God is smiling upon you. He's smiling upon you because Jesus on that good Friday, decided that he would take the cup, that he would follow God's will. Jesus could have got up and immediately been gone to heaven. But he says, I'm going to stay. I'm going to take on this punishment. I'm going to take on sin, sickness, and disease. I'm going to take it on so that my people who are called by my name won't have to take it on. And this will enable them to live a life on earth as it is in heaven. Not struggling, not stressing, not straining. That, that's not living the God kind of life. 
stress, struggle, strain, sickness, disease, lack. That's not the God kind of life. Jesus says, I took on all issues so you wouldn't have to take it on. All you got to do is come to me. Let me be your Lord and Savior. If you're watching me right now and you don't know in the next couple of seconds that if you died, you would go to heaven and spend eternity with Christ. The Lord says this, let me be your Lord and Savior. My yoke is easy. My burden's light. Let me show you how to have prosperity in every area of your life. Prosperity in your mind. Prosperity in your body. Prosperity. Come on, wake up and listen. Come on, come on, come on. Let me show you how to lean not to your own understanding, but follow my ways, my written ways, and what I speak to you. If you are watching and you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not sure if you would go to heaven, but you know that Jesus died for you and took on everything. You know there's a better life waiting for you here on earth and in heaven, both. We're not waiting to go to heaven to have a good life. I'm having a good life right now. I walk in abundance right now. I don't have to keep my head above water. I walk in the fullness of God right now. If you're not sure and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and we want you to text us right afterwards, say this, repeat after me. Father, I know without Jesus, I am lost. Jesus died for me. Jesus was beaten for me. Jesus took on sin, sickness, disease, and poverty for me. Say this, Jesus defeated death, the devil. Jesus defeated hell and the grave. And then Jesus rose on Resurrection Sunday with all power in his hands. Repeat after me. And he has given me that power. So Father, I receive Jesus as my Savior. And Father, I ask that you baptize me in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, heaven's language. I receive Jesus now. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. If you said that prayer for the first time, I haven't had to say a prayer like that. Text us, 832-229-8242. Text us, 832-229-8242. Add a plus one at the beginning. If you are international uh, adult or young adult and you're using WhatsApp, and we're going to send you something special, text us and let us know. Jesus decided to take on take on. He decided not to abandon you, but to stay and endure pain and suffering beyond belief. And then death for your victory, for my victory. He took on sin, sickness, disease, depression, oppression. You shouldn't be walking around with it unless you want to because he took it on. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless God. Hallelujah. Bless God. We have a quick praise report for about two minutes, two to three minutes, a quick praise report. And then I'm going to come back and I am going to confess over you. And we're going to thank the Lord for Jesus. Let's come on in, Miss Deborah Harris, for this quick Good Friday praise report. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hello, Miss Harris. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. <laughs> um, happy Good Friday, everybody. Um, good morning. Uh, I I just couldn't pass the opportunity to to share um, God's goodness, His faithfulness. Um, uh, my praise report. I was sharing with Pastor Trailer and Pastor Smith and Minister Siobhan 
uh, a couple of weeks ago that God had promoted me once again on my job. And um, it was very, very unexpected, even though uh, just about a year ago at one of our winning women's um, um, get togethers, Pastor Smith had prophesied to me that she saw me getting another promotion. And what I hadn't told her was that at the time, me and my boss weren't getting along. Actually, uh, hadn't since he started uh, such a difficult time, a difficult person to deal with. You, We've all had those type of bosses where it just makes it hard to even go to work. So I didn't even expect a promotion, but I received the word that she had prophesied to me and told me. And just this past March, uh, earlier this March, I received the news and it was at such a, a, a unexpected time because of everything that he had said and everything that we had been through and how I felt about being in the position I was, but God is faithful. He is so amazing and and um, I, it, when Pastor Smith gave me that word, I can I, I sowed. I continued to sow even above my tide and offering, and and pray daily. Um, every time I went by my boss's office, I would say a prayer. Uh, close the mouth of the line, God. I know you can turn things around, and sure enough, God was faithful. And um, bless me with this new opportunity, this new promotion. And it's been five promotions in the last uh, 15 years that I've been at this company. But and, and it just as God continues to grow my salary, I, 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 I tithe them even more because I committed to God even when I didn't have a job. Lord, if you would bless me with a, a job that I would never miss uh, paying my tithes and, and giving into the kingdom because he has been so good. He has been so faithful. And I just want to encourage those who are listening that you may not see uh, the promises of God. You might not see how God will work out a situation you may not understand how he's going to work through and 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 bless and and commit to the things that he has for you but it's so possible he says he's willing and able to do exceedingly and above all we can imagine and think if we could just learn to depend on him and give our lives to him and be faithful to him. So just as uh, Pastor Smith just said, that he, uh, Jesus took it on. He took it on for us so that God can smile on us, so that he can show us his favor. So that's my testimony. I, I hope that you are encouraged because uh, we don't always see how God can make a way, but I am a living witness. I am a living witness that he will. So thank you for this opportunity. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Oh my goodness. You had so many nuggets, so many pearls of wisdom. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We are so excited for your promotion, your latest promotion and watch what God will continue to do. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Easter Resurrection Sunday. I implore you all to join us online. We'll be on at a special time, 1030 a.m. Bless the name of the Lord. We are going to prophesy to you on Easter Resurrection Sunday. You don't want to miss. This is anointed ministry. This is a, the anointing of the Lord. The anointing of the Lord is heavy in this ministry. 
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So let's bless the Lord. Let me um, um, decree and declare over you and let's bless the Lord for just a few minutes. Hallelujah. Before we get ready to sow into the kingdom, do not disconnect, but stay on. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we thank your heavenly Father that Jesus is our Emmanuel, the Lord who is with us. We thank you, Father, that Jesus is our Alpha and our Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you. Come on, wherever you are, begin to lift your hands and begin to just wave your hands and begin to bless the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the Almighty. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the Apostle of our profession. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the eternal salvation. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus is the beloved son. Jesus is the branch. He is the bread of life. He is the captain of our salvation. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is Christ the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the prophet. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the consolation of Israel. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the chief shepherd. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus is the desire of the nations. Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the day spring. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the elect of God. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? Oh my goodness. Jesus is the everlasting father. He is the faithful witness. Come on and lift your hands and begin to bless the Lord. Jesus is the first and the last. Jesus is the first and the begotten. Jesus is the forerunner. Hallelujah. He is the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus is the governor. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And the government shall be on his shoulders. Jesus is the head of the church. He's the heir of all things. He's the holy child. He is the holy one. He is the holy one of God. He is the holy one of Israel. He is the image of God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We call you Jesus, the righteous son of God. You're the lily of the valley. You're the bright and morning star. We call you Jesus, the rose of Sharon. Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what Jesus did on Good Friday. We thank you that Jesus took on our sin, sickness, and disease. Jesus has forgiven us. Jesus has given us victory. Jesus has defeated the devil, death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus rose with all power. And then Jesus gave us that power. Hallelujah. He gave us power and authority over the evil one. He gave us power and authority over all the serpents and all the scorpions. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Jesus, who is the just one. Jesus, who is the king of the ages. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the law giver. He is the king of the saints. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And because we are in Jesus, we are blessed. Because we are in Jesus, we are blessed. We are not cursed. Come on now, clap your hands. We are blessed. We are not cursed. And every curse is in reverse. Because we are in Jesus, because we are a child of the king, we are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come in. We are blessed when we go out. We are blessed in our relationships. We are blessed physically. We are blessed mentally. We have favor psychologically. Hallelujah. Every part of our life is blessed. We speak blessings into our lives. We download blessings every day. Hallelujah. We speak blessings over those whom we love. We speak blessings over our family, over our friends, over our acquaintances. We speak blessings into our business. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the, of the Lord. We say that every part of our life comes into divine alignment. 
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Your business is blessed and favored. Your ministry is blessed and favored. Your job, your position, your leadership position is blessed and favored. Hallelujah. We are maturing in the things of God. We are held accountable because Jesus is one who holds people accountable. Hallelujah. Our home is blessed. It is a haven of peace. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I decree and declare wealth and riches shall be in your house. The ministry is blessed. Come on. Powerful life is blessed and favored. Kids Lives Matter is blessed and favored. Glory Meals and Cakes featuring WH Heavenly Barbecue is blessed and favored. Mega Care Impact is blessed and favored. And we call forth billions. We call forth billions. We call forth billions. Angels bring billions from heaven into the hands of our ministry and into our hands individually. We call forth billions. We call forth buildings. We call for buildings, not one building, buildings. God, you can do it. We call for land. We call for buildings and we call for bodies, souls of people, bodies, souls of people, millions around the world to hear the word of the Lord through powerful life ministries and kids lives matter. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Favor is our portion in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I know I'm getting plenty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's face is shining upon you. Numbers chapter six. And then the next verse of that says, and he shall be gracious unto you. He shall be gracious unto you. Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter three, verses 10 through 12. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse and bring it into anointed places that the Lord has assigned you to. You can't give everywhere. I'm sorry, baby. You can't. When you're mature, you're led by the Holy Ghost. Bring the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, Malachi chapter three, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. God says every time you bring the tithes and the offering, that he speaks for you to give every time you release it, windows of heaven open. Windows of heaven open. Well, what were they gonna open? What's coming out of it? Grace, favor, the things you need, the materials you need, the resources you need. Every time you tithe and offer, every time you tithe and offer obediently, consistently, not using your tithes and offerings to go on a vacation. God does want you to go have a vacation, but he's going to give you the funds to do so and the planning in order to do so. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Not giving your tithes and offering to family and friends. That ain't biblical. God says, bring the tithes and offering to the storehouse, to the storehouse. So there can be food in my house. God said, let me bless your giving. God said, let me speak to you as to what to give. And then let me bless it. Let me blow on it. Let me put my ruach on it. I'll bless what you give. I'll multiply. And you have a multiple harvest. You will have promotions like Miss Deborah Harris for I have. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He says, bring the tithes into the storehouse. That there'll be food in my house. And he says, try me now. Test me now in this. Says the Lord God of hosts, I'll open up the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive it. And he says, I rebuke the devil for you. I will rebuke the devil for you. I'll keep the devil off you. I'll keep the enemy off you. When you bring the tithes and the offering into the storehouse, he says, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor the vine shall now the vine fail to bear fruit in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed. This will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord has already given his way to prosper you consistently. It's through tithes and offering. The tithe is holy. It's set apart. It's 10% of all streams of income. Anything you have coming in, not just a paycheck, but anything you have coming in. He says, bring it. Bring it 10% or more. Let me, it's, it's holy unto me. Set it aside. Put it aside first. Don't go run and pay bills. 
put the tithe aside first. Bring it into anointed ministry. He says, let me blow on it. Let me put my blessing on it. Let me open up heaven over it. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. When you bring the tithes and offering consistently, you're ensured that God's kingdom assignments are done, are done on the earth as it is in heaven. And the Lord says, test me, try me. The windows of heaven are going to open up. He says, give and give consistently. Not once in a while, not every now and again. But as you mature, you already understand that giving is a sign of trust. Giving is a matter of the heart. God, do I trust you or am I in fear? Do I? If I'm in fear, I'm going to hold it back. But if I trust you, I'm going to put it into the kingdom. The Lord says he'll prosper you financially. He'll prosper you financially and in every area of your life when you tithe and offer. God says, do it, do it, and watch what will happen. God says, I'm going to also prosper you in your life if you walk in love. Stop cursing out people. Stop getting offended by everybody. The Lord says, I'm going to also prosper you if you obey my written and spoken word. The Lord says, I'm going to also prosper you if you run away from sin, if you, if, if you don't yield to sin. God says, I am going to prosper you. I am going to prosper you. I, he says, when you live a life holy and pleasing unto the Lord, God says, I will prosper you. I will prosper you. I'm going to prosper you when you give your tithes and offerings. I'm going to prosper you when you live right. I'm going to prosper you when you talk right. I'm going to prosper you when you're patient with people. I'm going to prosper, uh, uh, prosper you when you stop fighting with people, when you stop getting offended. I'm going to prosper you as you obey and follow the instructions that I've given ministers and pastors for their ministry. Uh, he says, I will prosper you. The Bible says in Isaiah 119, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. The Lord says, I'm going to prosper you if you spend daily time with the Lord. I will prosper you. I will prosper you. If you constantly hear the word of the Lord through this ministry, come on live through this ministry every week and then comment. God says, just you coming on, just you showing maturity. God says, I will prosper you. He says, I'm going to prosper you when you give to those in need. I'm going to make sure that you never lack. I'm going to make sure that you never lack. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. Before Jesus preached, before he gave the law, before he gave the word of God, he met the needs of the people. And he says, you will never lack. You will never lack. That's what this ministry does. Help, healing, hope. That's what this ministry does. Right now, Shepherd Praise Church in Ghana has a dirt floor. They have a dirt floor. A dirt floor. We've done other things to the church to remodel it. God says, what you do for these people, what you do to build this house in Ghana, I'm going to build your house. I'm going to build your personal house and I'm going to build the ministry house. What you do for others, for kingdom's sake, God said, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to build your house and I'm going to build the ministry house. Look at Shepherd Praise Church. They didn't have a door. We put that in. It needed painted painting we had done that the pastor was sitting in a plastic chair we've gotten new chairs for the elders help with the pulpit all of those things but they come to church on a dirt floor they didn't even have air circulating around now they have ceiling fans now god said build this church and watch what i will do watch what i will do take a look at these pictures take a look at what we've been doing in powerful life and kids lives matter how we have given the beds and the food and the computers and all of those things. Take a look. Take a look at what we do. Yes. Take a look at what we've done in Glory Mills. Take a look at what we've done. Hallelujah. With uh, Mega Care Impact. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see it. You know where your offering is going. You know where your tithes and offering is going. You know where your first food is going. You got ministries that be taking up tithes and first fruit ministries and church ministries. We're both. Uh, but you've got church ministries and ministries that pick up. You don't know what they're doing with anything. God says, the first thing I want you to do is honor the Lord and help my people. Hallelujah. That's why our people prosper so. They see the price. They see it. They, oh, my goodness, Pastor Smith. I see it. 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 Hallelujah. 
Here is the seed offering, the name of the seed, just like a farmer sows a seed, like an apple seed, and it comes up with a harvest. Here is the name of the seed for Good Friday. It's a Numbers chapter 6 seed. God's face, his countenance, smiles upon you. And then the next, the next few words is, and he is gracious unto you. That means he favors you. God smiles upon you. His countenance looks upon you. And then he's gracious unto you. Grace means favor. One of the definitions of grace means favor. That's not the full definition of grace, but that's one of them. God's face, his countenance smiles upon you because of what Jesus did at the cross, because of the beatings that Jesus took. And then the next few words is, he's gracious unto you. He's gracious unto you. Okay. So you're going to ask the Lord, what do I tithe and offer? What do I tithe and offer? The Lord says, but you watching, it's going to be more than what you think. The Lord said, don't tighten up. Don't get scared. He's going to speak it to you. For some of you, your tithe and offering, which we're dividing in four areas. I hear the Lord saying, for some of you, it's going to be a thousand. He says, for one person, it's going to be 1,500 that he's going to speak to you. Whether you obey it or not is up to you. For others, it may be 500. It may be 250. It may be less than that. Whatever the Holy Spirit speaks, do it. We're dividing our tithe and offering into four areas. Powerful life, kids' lives matter. Ministers appreciation. God says when you give to ministers and pastors, Ezekiel chapter 44, there's a special grace upon you, on your household. I release it every time. Minister William Stickney's birthday is upcoming on Monday, Easter Monday. And the Lord says, sow a special extra seed in ministers appreciation. We would not have things set up. He sets up all of our services. He delivers beds. He coordinates everything for our services. He co helps to coordinate for the food that we're packing up, the people to get their beds. He goes and hangs pictures. He does this, that, and the other. Even when he don't feel like it, he does it. He's mature enough to put kingdom first. And the Lord says, we must bless him. He is an essential part of this ministry. He and his wife. And his birthday is upcoming, April the 1st, Easter Monday. So extra. Ask the Holy Spirit what to sow into ministers' appreciation so we can get it to him. Hallelujah. And then mega care impact as well. We are feeding not only people here in Houston, but we are feeding we made the devil out of a lie. Since the enemy wouldn't let us have the building at Irvington, they have our service. We made the devil out of a lie. There will be a powerful life shepherd praise service in Ghana. Resurrection Easter Sunday. We got to feed the people. And the mega care account has gotten low because we have, we're sending out. So God says, Ask him what to sow in those four areas. Then there's a fifth area, first fruit. The Lord says, I want a special seed. It's a thank you seed for what Jesus has done. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. He said, put that in first fruit. First fruit, Proverbs chapter three. Bring the first fruit. This is what the Lord says. He says, many of you for first fruit, and, and, and the Lord shared this with us at the, at the middle of March. And people have already been giving. He says, many of you I will lead to sow a $500 seed into first fruit. That's not the tithe. That's not the regular tithe. That's not the regular offering. First fruit is this. It's a special seed. It's the first. It's the best. And he says, it will cause your barns to be filled with plenty. Proverbs chapter 3. Read it yourself. And your vats to overflow. It causes plenty and overflow. It People say, how do you and Pastor Traylor and Minister Siobhan have? Because we sow and give. We give first fruit. We give our offerings. So it causes us to have plenty and overflow. Plenty and overflow. Plenty and overflow. Plenty and overflow. Because we give obediently. 
We give sacrificially. We don't hold it back. We don't get scared that we're not going to have anything. We're not selfish. We don't keep stuff away from people. We give. So God always makes sure. The word, the word's way is totally different from the world. The world says, keep all you got, can all you get, and get all you can. The world says, gimme, gimme, gimme. My name is Jimmy, and I ain't giving you nothing. But that ain't the word. The word says, sow it, give it. So in first fruit, many of you will be led to give 500 or more. Some will be led to give less. This is a special first fruit seed so we can get the flooring in to the Shepherd Place Church. So when they come to church on Sunday, they'll have a floor and food. This is what the Lord said. The Lord said, have food after service and they won't have to come and stand in the dirt. The congregants sit in plastic chairs. We're going to eventually uh, get new chairs. That's, that's what the Lord has spoken. But God says, give what I speak to you. It's separate over and above and put it in first fruit. Ask the Lord. He's speaking to you now. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. God says, give me a special first fruit offering seed during this resurrection weekend so that this church can have everything that's needed. New flooring when the people walk in, food for the kids, food for the adults after service, everything. God says, release it. If you have a business, a project, a play, a book, you a leader on your job, you a leader somewhere, you got people reporting to you, you in sales, you're a content creator, or you're about to have it. God says, give and sow on behalf of that and watch what will happen. Every seed you sow, attach, aim it. Lord, I'm sowing the seed for this. The name of our regular seed during this Good Friday, remember, is in Numbers chapter 6 seed. God smiles upon me, Numbers chapter 6. The next word is, therefore he is gracious, that means favor unto me. If you're in the United States, give via Cash App. We're giving in our four regular areas for our regular tithes and offering. We're asking, Lord, what should I give in minister's appreciation as well? Because it is uh, uh, Minister Stickney's birthday. And then, Lord, what should I give in first fruit? This is separate over and above the tithe. Ask the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you. We have our Zale. Look on your screen. We have our cash app. We now have Zell for Papa Life as well. You don't have to be afraid. We pray over our Zell and our cash app. It ain't never been no fraud here. You can also give online through our text to giving. We use a Christian company for that. Plead the blood of Jesus over your giving. Here's our Zell for Papa Life. People have asked for it. There it is. All the information on your screen. Bless God. Then if you're in Ghana, you're a Momo minister and Mrs. Linda Adam. Our information is there. If you're in Côte d'Ivoire, you send via Sinway to Kandiaski. If you're in South Africa, you'll contact, contact Ongi via Capitec and Cash Send. All the information is there. If in other parts of the world, you may use PayPal. If you need MoneyGram or Western Union, contact Minister Siobhan, 832-229-8242 at a plus one at the beginning. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We've got to get funds to, the, to, these, uh, to this church to get the flooring in today so that it is done by Easter Resurrection Sunday. Release the seed out of your hands now in first fruit. The, the spiritual and mature will obey and in the other areas that I listed. Power for Life, Kids Lives Matter, Mega Care Impact, and Minister's Appreciation. Ask the Holy Spirit what you should give. He will tell you. Don't be afraid. He says, don't hold it back. It'll lead to consequences. Release it. Let me bless it. I'm going to give you more. There's no shortage in heaven. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us this Good Friday. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for you. 
Get ready for us to prophesy to you on Easter resurrection morning. Blessings unto you. Bye-bye.